Hello everybody and welcome back to the Traction channel for another brand new video. Now, like many of you, I got my hands on Gran Turismo 7 just before last weekend and it's fair to say I am in love with this game. I spent so many hours over the weekend playing through it, trying to make as much progress as possible and it, it really stood out to me as one of the best single player gaming experiences I've had in a long, long time. Now you may have seen already on the channel we have a Gran Turismo 7 review and a full graphics comparison, but I didn't write the review, this was all written by our editorial team and the game is amazing. What I wanted to do today was take the opportunity to talk to you exactly why I love this game so much. I want to tell you the specific reasons as to why from my personal experience this is one of the best games in a long, long time. Before I jump into the main points, a quick reminder to subscribe to the Traction channel. Why would you do that? Well, we have plenty more content coming up for you involving Gran Turismo 7 and many other games, including tips, tricks, guides, and all sorts. So yeah, subscribe to the channel. You'll be able to see every single video as it's released. Right then, here are the specific things I love about Gran Turismo 7 so far, and I'm gonna start with the big ones. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the pacing of the game and the general progression system. Now, I absolutely love the pace of Gran Turismo 7. A lot of modern racing games the progression just feels too fast. You get thrown GT3 cars or racing cars or supercars very early on in the game, so you never really get to truly enjoy the experience of driving them fast for the first time. You get them so early that you don't really feel that difference between those and the slower cars. Now with Gran Turismo 7, you start off with obviously your small Japanese compact cars, you pick one, you really have to do quite a few races in those cars until you can build up enough money to afford the likes of a, a small sports car or something like this. Now for me, this is something I've banged on about for ages. I really love the pace of the old Gran Turismo games because when you first jump in, say a Nissan Skyline or something with 300 horsepower, 350 horsepower, you feel the power. You're just amazed by how fast this thing feels. And Gran Turismo 7 gives you that feeling. I remember the first time I bought a 370Z from the used car dealership and it felt really fast to me. It felt exciting to drive something rear wheel drive as well. And I only got that because the game pushed me down that channel of driving the slower cars first. In terms of the overall progression of the game, I feel similarly positive because I feel like it struck a really nice balance. The game is huge, there's so much to do and there's so many different avenues you can take, but at the same time, when you play for a number of hours in a row, you genuinely do feel like you make good progress. You make a lot of money, you develop your cars, you, you always end the day with a better selection of cars than you started the day with. So I think that balance is really nice as well. Okay, the next topic of discussion is the handling. Now, I've got to make this clear from the off. I have been playing so far my entire Gran Turismo 7 experience with a controller, except for a couple of races I did on the wheel when I was capturing for a graphics comparison video and for the review. Now, I think, again, this is something Gran Turismo 7 have absolutely nailed because they're accommodating new racers who are using a controller and want some accessible motorsport, and they're also accommodating the hardcore sim racers because on a steering wheel, from everything I've picked up and everything I've heard from others who've spent more time on it, the handling is very, very good indeed. The force feedback is strong, it feels, the cars actually feel like they should feel they're difficult to drive they feel weighty and they, they handle in a, in a precise way that you would expect now on a controller it feels like a Gran Turismo game it feels like Gran Turismo always has and I honestly feel like I can be competitive on a controller in an online race or against any of the challenges offline as well I've not yet found a challenge where I haven't been able to get gold with the controller but it has taken me quite a lot of attempts on many occasions specific challenges are very very tough indeed and I think this is a really nice balance because if I really wanted to go those extra few miles I could plug in my wheel but I can still complete the game to its full extent using a controller which I absolutely love the detail you get from the PlayStation 5 controller is incredible as well. I love the adaptive triggers, the rumbles, you can feel the curbs, the contact, the lockups, everything like that. It's fantastic. One final thing to mention of course about the handling is how it's accommodating the new drivers as well because there are lots of assists you can turn on which means the people who have never played racing games before or at least never played hardcore sims before can still get a lot out of this game. It may be tough for them but there, there are assists there to help them kind of get started and get used to it all so that is fantastic and then they can dial things back once they get more comfortable. Okay point number three tuning. This was a hugely important factor in the older Gran Turismo games. I remember spending so long in the various tuning workshops in Gran Turismo 4, buying different parts for different cars, and I think they've smashed it with Gran Turismo 7. It's simple enough to understand and use, so you know that you can upgrade your suspension, you can see when you're making your car better because of the performance point system, but you actually do need to tune your cars in order to be competitive in certain races, which I really like. It's a balance between 
um, spending lots of money and making your car very strong so you can win the races easily or spending a little bit of money just to improve little things and the great thing about it is you can really feel the differences if you go onto sports suspension it's going to feel better around the corners with the tires as well they're hugely important you will feel all of that extra grip as well as the braking performance as well through brake pads and brake discs so I love the way they've done the tuning, you can feel the difference with every setting and all in all it's an important part of the game and it should be an important part because that's always been part of Gran Turismo car culture. Okay so the next thing I'm really enjoying about Gran Turismo 7 so far is the format of the races. Yes it's not super realistic, there's no qualifying, you always start from the back and quite often you're already 30 or 40 seconds behind the race leader by the time you start the race. But that's what makes it so fun. There isn't a boring race on Gran Turismo 7 unless your car is so overpowered that you are leading by the end of the first lap. Generally speaking, the races in Gran Turismo 7 are all huge fun because essentially you are chasing down the leader throughout the race and you can keep an eye on the gap thanks to the HUD so you can kind of work out as you're going along how much progress you need to be making. And for me, I hugely, hugely enjoy watching that timer go down and down and down and realizing I'm gonna catch the leader on the last lap. Maybe I make a mistake and can't quite get, get hold of them and I'm trying to just get into P3. You've also got to weave your way through traffic as you go through the races too. So I know this is not new for Gran Turismo 7, but I really do enjoy the race format. It's very much a Gran Turismo specific thing rather than realistic, and I'm totally here for that. So touching on a couple of things I've already mentioned, performance points and AI, I think the difficulty level for Gran Turismo 7 has been balanced very well indeed. As I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the handling, it is possible to get golds in pretty much every mission or challenge with a controller, but it's not easy, which is how it should be. And also in terms of the actual races themselves, the fact that the game recommends you how many performance points you should use for a particular race is a really useful gauge, because I know, for example, that if I have a car that's got 500 performance points and the game recommends me 500 performance points, I can probably win that race fairly comfortably. So I might save a little bit of money, spend a little bit less on fancy suspension or a turbo, and maybe you know have my performance points 20 or 30 below the recommended target just to make the race more enjoyable because I know that if I win the race I'm gonna have earned it. You can basically use this recommended performance points number to gauge your own difficulty level and obviously it affects the spending in the process so I think that's really really good. I love that they limit it in certain races as well to make it difficult so you can't just turn up in a car that's 300 horsepower more than the other cars around you so yeah I think they've done a great job. Very easy to keep track of your difficulty. As you can probably tell by now, I am a very big fan of Gran Turismo 7 and you know, ever since the game's come out, all of us at Traction HQ won't stop talking about it. We've been discussing the different races, the things we like about it. Now, I'm going to acknowledge at this stage, of course, this game is not perfect. There are quite a few things I don't like about it as well, but it's just such a good overall package that I feel like this video needs to be made. Okay, on to the next section, weather. The way that rain is implemented in Gran Turismo 7 is like nothing I have ever experienced before in a racing game. Now I'm not saying that it's uber realistic, it's not as if you can just drive around the outside lines of every corner finding grip like you can sometimes in real life, but the way that it changes and the, the dynamicness of it all, is dynamicness even a word? It's a constantly evolving thing, so every single lap you're going to have different amounts of grip on different sections of the road. Obviously your drying line, that is realistic, the way that you have to kind of stay where you are in the middle of the road if you want the grip. And if you try and overtake on the wet section of road, you're probably going to miss your braking point, lock up and end up in a barrier at turn two in Austria and lose a race because of it. I love that racing slicks will be completely useless in the wet and the sports tyres will be better. I love that you have the option of wet and intermediate tyres if you so wish. It's just all very cool and the detail in particular is spectacular. This is probably highlighted best in a particular license test, I'm not going to spoil which one for those of you who haven't reached this stage yet, but a very late license test demonstrates the rain in the best way possible and when I first tried this test out, I was absolutely blown away by how incredibly dynamic it was, how difficult it was, the curbs would send you into a spin instantly and you had to stay so carefully on that dry line. It was just, as I say, detail beyond what I've experienced before. I'm rambling. Weather's amazing. Okay, so that is it with the major things. I'm now gonna run through a selection of smaller things which I also notice and also love about this game, starting with fictional circuits. Now, there are no brand new circuits on Gran Turismo 7. All of them have been in previous Gran Turismo games. Some of them have been updated and evolved a little bit, but they're all based on the same circuits. However, I don't really care that there aren't any brand new tracks because I absolutely love the selection that are in there. These tracks give off a similar energy to those classic circuits built years and years ago that no longer would be able to happen because of health and safety. So think of your Spas, your Monzas, your Imola, for example. All of these older tracks that are so beautiful and gorgeous and the landscape around them is incredible, but they probably couldn't be built these days. The view when you come over the crest of Trial Mountain and the trees open out, 
think of Lake Maggiore as well, when you come down the hill suddenly into this bowl and this amazing right-hander full of camber. The, the final corner at Alsace as well, when you come down the hill into the final chicane. I've probably butchered the pronunciation of that track. And admittedly, a lot of these are really cool downhill sections. But then you've even got the amazing uphill section on the shorter version of Alsace. And of course, we can't get away without mentioning the death chicane at Dragon Trail. These tracks all create special moments and have special feelings. It's honestly like classic tracks being made in the modern era. They are just incredible. I am in love. Thank you, Gran Turismo. Let's move on. Car choice. The range is insane. You have obviously your modern day racing cars, your group ones, twos, threes and fours, but you also have rally cars. You have little compact cars, you have classic cars, you have 80s supercars, you have 90s sports cars. I just, I can keep going. It's also great that the world map is back. It's not as if you're just launching the game and selecting options from a menu to start a race. That just feels like a means to an end. With Gran Turismo 7, when you enter Gran Turismo mode, you're entering the world of Gran Turismo 7. It feels like it's welcoming you in. Playing the game makes you feel like you are somewhere and you're making genuine progress. It has a soul. Speaking of soul, the whole game kind of carries that aura about it. It's the music, it's the, the atmosphere. Uh, when you go into the cafe, do you not just really want to order a coffee? Because I want to go to that cafe in real life. I want to talk to Sarah. I want to talk to Luca. I want to have a coffee there because it just looks so nice. The amazing visuals carry over to the gameplay as well. The lighting, the detail is incredible from circuit to circuit, car to car, different weather conditions, time of day. It's not dramatic and over the top like you might get in some more arcade style games. It's still realistic, but every single race feels a little bit different. Another thing I love is the educational aspect of this game. When you jump in a slow, compact car that would normally be quite boring, but then you've got someone in the cafe telling you the history about that car, what it's called in different countries, why it's sold so well, what makes it special. You feel like every single car has a purpose in the game, and you have more of an attachment to that car because you know that it's done something good in the world of the automobile that maybe you would not care about normally because you just want to go vroom vroom fast fast. I love learning the reasons why a certain car has flared arches. I love learning the racing pedigree behind a car or why it was even created in the first place. It's all very cool for a car nerd like me. You also never get bored with the same type of racing over and over again. Of course, the main world circuit section is fairly similar throughout, but you also have license center. You have missions with drag racing, drifting, one lap magic, overtaking challenges, slipstreaming challenges, fuel economy challenges. You're never going to be stuck doing the same thing over and over again if you don't want to be. Oh, and we can't go the whole video without talking about multiplayer, of course, and sport mode. The thing I love about that, the simplicity of it. You just fire it up, you can jump in any of the daily races, they're usually turning over fairly quickly so you won't have to wait for long, and you can just jump in and have a fun race with plenty of other excited people online as well. I just love the simplicity of it. Can you tell I love this game? I'm going to finish up by talking about something that is, to me, possibly the most important thing that they have absolutely got right with this game, and it's the balance between new and nostalgia. Those of you like me who were in love with the old Gran Turismo games, Gran Turismo 3, Gran Turismo 4, this game will definitely please you. The progression, the grind, it's all there, it's all difficult. You need to tune your cars and you really need to earn your way through the ranks. It's not easy, it's a hard game to play, but hugely satisfying because of it. However, they've not just gone and remade the old Gran Turismo games. They've come up with new features, new ideas. They've changed the progression system with the cafe menu to make the game feel modern, new and different. So it is like a new experience for me playing it through. It's also obviously got the newest cars, the latest technology in terms of graphics, physics, handling. What they've managed to do is build a bridge. They've created a game for those who want a new and exciting experience, but they've also created a game that fans of the old games really miss and wanted back again. So hats off to you, Polyphony Digital. I think you've absolutely smashed this one. So those are my thoughts on Gran Turismo 7, but I would love to know what you lot think of the game as well. If you could let me know down in the comments below what you like about it, what you don't like about it, I'm just very intrigued to see if you love it as much as I do. To those of you who haven't managed to get hold of it or don't have a PlayStation, I am very sorry. Hopefully you'll be able to experience it at some point in the future. But that's going to be it for me today, so thank you so much as always for watching. Keep it pinned and have a great day.